Yeah, so why don't you guys tell us who's going to win this match with the community vote? We'll bring it up on your screen and see exactly what happened. Looks like it's 61% to Evil Geniuses and 31% to Rogue. So pretty substantially in EG's favor. Yeah, I, I mean, given the fact that Rogue won in their last interaction, if I recall correctly, in DreamHack Montreal, uh, I'm a little surprised that this went the way it did. I figured it would have likely been closer than that, Michael. I didn't expect it to be a... Uh... <sighs> quite a quite as lopsided as that. That's a two-thirds majority. That we, is enough to get through any filibuster in the U.S. Senate, and that's pretty good for EG <laughs> as well. So, yeah, that's true. I mean, well, we got to be honest. If EG is the fan favorite of North America, they are the team in NA. So I'm not entirely surprised. That, that by the that. people like. They are the people's team. The people's champion, and we'll see uh, if they can smell what the uh, what the game is cooking as we'll head into bomb on border between evil geniuses and rogue and get our first match of play day number three underway mm -hmm. first band is going to be rogue yeah so they are going to go ahead and start us off so we get rid of Blackbeard. Ooh, I actually really like that ban from Rogue. It's it's a little bit of a weird one. You don't normally see uh, Blackbeard get banned out, but against a team like Evil Geniuses who make such good use of Blackbeard. I, I just There's so many situations on border, especially where EG will stick a Blackbeard on an angle and completely cut you off, strangle your defense. So getting rid of that is fantastic. And there's a lot of really good Blackbeard players on EG. It's not limited to any one individual. So it's good to have that very dynamic role gone. Dokubi is going to be the attacker ban for EG, and they will also take care of Echo. How much of a surprise to see Blackbeard get banned? He actually got banned a little bit more than I anticipated yesterday mm. alongside Maestro. And we saw a lot of shields getting banned out with Monty getting banned too. So... Not, th not anything really that strange here that I'm seeing. Though Dokubi being a ban is interesting. You want to mention. Yeah. So we've got, again, that Echo and Maestro double ban out. And that is so heavy a blow to the defense on any map, really. And, uh, yeah, Border qualifies. So that is going to be a really um, a strong counter to any defensive team. And it's going to force you as a defensive squad to be a little bit more inventive. What you were talking about earlier. Uh, you got that stale, uh, stale meta. You got to be more inventive. You got no Maestro and no Echo. Doubly so. Yeah, it's, it, this is going to put a lot of pressure onto the defense to be able to pull this off. And yeah, losing a Dokubi and certainly losing a Blackbeard Defenders will assist you. But more importantly than back. anything, I think these are two really crippling defender bans here. Yeah. Now, you've still got Mira available on the board. Both teams are capable of playing Mira. Rogue typically has a Mira in either Eclipse's or Easley's hand if Easley's not playing that Echo or the Maestro, neither of which will be available. Yeah, you see, we have three information operators on the defense right now, and that's compensating for the lack of the Echo and the Maestro. You just have to go heavy on that information when you don't have your Evil Eyes or your Yokai drones. Yeah. All right, so let's get things started here. Going upstairs to Armory, not too much of a surprise for that to be the... Uh-oh. Uh um, well, it looks, like, it looks like we will be having a, a re-host since we haven't actually started the action phase. It should be, yeah. So it will very likely be called. Unfortunate that that happens, but it does from time to time. In search of bread, obviously figuring out that it's not in the actual game lobby themselves. So we're... Uh, Troy went to get some. Welcome back to our still our first matchup of the day, and we're going to be getting into it in just a moment between Evil Geniuses and Rogue. Now, the ruling is that the first round will actually go to Rogue, so Rogue will be up one nothing due to uh, yeah due to the the situation that you saw occur. So there you have it. Now, an unfortunate disconnect. Admin decision. It does happen, and the admin decision is final. So there you yeah there you go. Admin decision. So we'll go in and. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's okay. Mm -hmm. Now let's touch upon let's touch upon this again. We have no hard breachers banned. We have two incredibly powerful anchors that are banned. We have both Echo and Maestro. We imagine that this is going to be a frag fest. We're going to see what roles both of these teams decide to use upon themselves. Now heading into this, uh, these teams technically don't need to uh, to use the same operators because it's not an actual rehost. The first round did go to Rogue, so it yeah. will continue onwards. And uh, yeah. We'll go from there. So with armory, uh, with armory lockers locked, <laughs> we're gonna go to ventilation room and workshop on the main floor. Yeah, and uh, that's your standard site rotation there, ladies and gentlemen. So 
Going downstairs, it's going to be a very similar defense because the castle is being brought out. It's very likely you will be having roamers upstairs. We have seen all of those castle barricades go entirely on the teller's side on a ventilation defense just to aid in the actual site play. Uh, so it's really up to Rogue how they want to set themselves up. But it's, again, it spells out roaming heavy top floor. And uh, same thing with the Mira, actually, because usually... Both of the mirror windows on a ventilation defense will go upstairs. You can see those cameras being set up also by vertical. So again, that information being so very important for Rogue, the lack of the uh, Echo and Maestro. And uh, this setup already is looking like a heavy top floor hold. Stands to reason. You really want to defend ventilation the same way you defend armory, uh, with just more space to fall back. Yeah. So. Valkyrie being brought out on the board. Lots of fragging potential for EG. Would you look at that? You got Canadian on the Ash. You like it when NVK goes on the Ash. It's going to be Canadian yeah. this time. It's going to bring the heat. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if he can uh, keep that uh, roll in its position and uh, really pull out the frags. You said yesterday maybe a little bit lackluster, but I mean, it happens. And. Uh, I wouldn't say lackluster, just that they had Young and Necrox, they're really okay. performing well. Yeah, the, the expectations of the frags, yes. which I mean, it really ties into what we were talking about earlier. But uh, moving on into the actual action phase, we have uh, finally some people in a position to shoot at each other. That is usually how this map works, mm -hmm. of Canadian taking a couple shots and just to open up some of that soft wall that leads all the way into office. Keep in mind that top floor clear is going to be very important and not wasting much time. Not wasting much time here. My apologies, I trip over my words. Will BEG opening up the castle barricade, seeing that there are at least two members of Rogue that will be playing up top inside of Armory. A jackal on evil geniuses will allow Necrox to be able to try to pin down a member of Rogue. And if you look at that, Rogue's actually got a number of bodies upstairs. Mm. Four bodies over top of the site, all just patrolling those open hatches, keeping that vertical control in hand. So this might look a little bit dangerous uh, for the uninitiated, and it's understandable, but they've got all the rotations they could ever need in those drop downs. Attack on top of that, they've got off. Easley on the lesion in the site, and that's possibly the best anchor in this situation because he can use those lesions to detect any entry from any location. Geo's gonna get the first kill though, and Eclipse goes down to a grenade, well tossed by the sledge. And you could see this pinch from Evil Geniuses on the top floor is well coordinated. MVK is going to detect the Mira inside a small office. Shuttle putting down that ADS is going to allow him protection from the potential second nade there, but uh, it's unlikely that it'll be tossed right this minute. Speaking of tossing, you can see that we have Slash in a position to throw his C4. He's waiting for the right opportunity. Here it goes, and he will, unfortunately for him, miss. He's gonna get pushed from behind by Necrox. That falls on Shuttle, who was too busy. Looking all the way over an armor side, but two from Shuttle as he looks for a third after the exothermic charge of Young will go off and give very limited cover to the Jaeger playing inside of half wall. Waiting for another tussle. But there's no engagement for the time being on shuttle side of things. He'll have to head back to site as Canadian gets a kill of his own, picking off vertical and easily Ooh. trying to rotate in, finds himself in the crosshairs of Canadian. He'll pick up his second kill. The game will now be on to try and figure out shuttle's location. Making no time whatsoever of it will be Canadian as he makes up for the first round loss and equalizes, taking ventilation and workshops for the attackers. <laughs> So, Canadian is a very hype individual. <laughs> I can tell you that from experience. He really gets into it. And I can also tell you from experience that when you come back after getting a, after forfeiting a round, when you come back and win the next one, it puts you in the best possible mindset. It puts you in the, yeah, we got this mindset. Because you might be even in the round count, but yeah, you managed to win the first one that was played out. And that is something. Now, ventilation again here from Rogue. Their defense there was not exactly poorly set up, but there were some major flaws in the way Rogue executed that hold. Uh, one thing I really have to point a finger at is, yes, Shuttle was the one getting the kills, but he also made a lot of mistakes. He failed to cover Slash from the main hallway, which was his job. He failed to protect, uh, I want to say, Eclipse from the grenade that came from Geo using that ADS, which was also his job. So if Shuttle had done his job in both of those situations, and gotten the kills that he got, it probably would have been a rogue round. So definitely a mistake, something he's gonna have to fix moving forward. It does happen though, it's very likely either A, a miscommunication on his rolls, or B, a misunderstanding of where his ADS is needed to go. Whatever the case, something that needs to be fixed on the rogue side overall. 
So we'll see if they can correct those errors on round number three here as the final touch-ups are getting done. Up top once again with a similar lineup coming out from Rogue with easily instead going with the smoke instead of the lesion. I don't know how much those goo mines really assisted uh, last time around, so... Well, the attack almost entirely came from the top floor, so I wouldn't say it's his fault the lesions didn't help since he was so focused downstairs, but yeah, I think the smoke's the right call. So, EG was very quick to be able to enter the building last time. I don't necessarily think that it was a big part of why they succeeded, as they still took a while to find that first kill, which, as you noted, came off of the frag grenade that was tossed out by Geo. So we'll see what EG is able to make on their advance inside of CCTV. A very similar setup here from Canadian to see if he's going to find a castle barricade. And there you go. It's going to be a mirror to that previous round from Canadian, being able to take out some of the utility from Eclipse shelter Rogue inside of Armory Lockers. I you can see already that Rogue is shooting up a lot of the errors they had in the previous round. So mirroring the defense, but I think a little bit more focused on what Evil Geniuses did to counter them. Hard to uh, undervalue, actually, the way that Slash's C4 did not go off. Mm. It could have been really consequential there, yeah. especially on the Thermite or even the Thatcher that was playing around the corner of the Armory Wall. This time around, once again, Slash will hold on to that C4 in hopes of finding more value with it. This Canadian finds a couple bodies on his own, and oh, he almost takes out Vertical. The Valkyrie having the back is back to the Ash, playing up top on Vents. EG almost getting a free kill there, but Vertical or Jaeger actually possibly looking like he is in the process of being jackal tracked here, Michael. Inside of offices, just waiting for a push with a great level on that 416 carbine. Evil Geniuses have done a wonderful job at surrounding Rogue, but Slash is going to get the first kill onto Canadian. So that's a great start for Rogue. You see Geo will refrag, though, almost immediately onto Easily. And that's going to prompt Rogue to fall off the top floor, at least for the most part. Two going down. Focusing on the anchor, because Easily was that solo anchor. And having somebody on site, of course, essential, as EG have shifted their focus. An excellent shot there from Necrox, who will go down to about 25 HP, but still a win is a win. c 7 e gets slept on as a weapon an awful lot. Yeah. It ends up being one of the best weapons on attack for that Jackal, and almost meeting its match in the Carbine, as you see how low Necrox is with Shuttle just almost winning that fight. So Ooh. Necrox actually might see the foot, but he gets baited into it from Slash, as that's vertical over top of the hatch. And Geo's there, and he might actually see the soul as well, trying to creep on up. The Valkyrie's position could be spotted, and that could give Geo a bit of an assist here. But vertical right over top of that diffuser going down will likely look to drop with Geo covering that F2 as a great fire rate. Oh, a good shot from vertical as Geo misses his mark and doesn't see the Valkyrie. Circling below is Geo, but Geo will win that fight. Taking Vertical down, leaving the upstairs control in Rogue's favor. The Diffuser will need to be planted from Geo. Who knows? He has no contest as both members of Rogue are above. They'll hit the deck. Eclipse pushing in. He goes for the default spot. Behind the lumber is Geo waiting. Oh, and NVK's there with the cover. Geo on site gets felled by Slash as he drops. But an NVK, a beautiful cover as Slash ponders. Whether or not to take a moment to get that Diffuser, but EG is all over it. You can see there, that's why you set your shadows to ultra kids. <laughs> you saw that mirror coming about a second before she showed up, and EG takes two rounds in a row. Can't you technically set it to medium and they still pop up? Michael, it was just, you know what, you don't need to do this on a broadcast. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I get distracted, but okay, let's pick apart that round. A big part of that for me, <laughs> a big part of that for me was vertical. So... Playing the Valkyrie on the drop down, I don't know if he was aware of this. You said he was baiting. It might have been a bait. If it was, it was genius. But all of that aside, his foot was showing on the drop, and evil geniuses got entirely too distracted by vertical. He was instrumental in that victory. The biggest play he made, of course, denying the plant just in default corner. So props to him for playing that drop very well. Uh, overall, the... Uh, Clutch, though, coming out from NVK was the star of the show. And he got his first two kills in that round. So props to him for actually getting the win. I think it would have been a more definitive round, again, if not for Vertical's play on the drop. Now, another thing that is kind of puzzling to me is the shift from the upstairs attack to the downstairs attack from EG. Because it looked to me like Evil Geniuses had a good surround on control of the top floor. I'm guessing the reason that they made the call to rotate downstairs was because of the pick that they got 
on Easily, which makes sense. The only anchor is dispatched. But again, it's so easy and so fast for those roamers to rotate. They just need to drop. That's it. That's all there is to it. And that really did put a pause on the Evil Genius's attack. That's two things, the vertical play and the shift from EG that I feel like really hindered them a little bit. And despite that fact, they still won it. So again, props to EG. Now, maybe this is just my misread of the situation, but it does appear that through both of those rounds, despite the fact that you have a Valkyrie on the board and a Mira designed to try and give you at least two windows towards your opponents, Rogue did not really know where EG was for most of those rounds. You saw it on the very first attempt from Evil Geniuses onto the Ventilation Workshop from above. Rogue was getting picked apart at every single turn, and their rotates were getting them caught out from EG waiting for their advance. Maybe, maybe it was just that EG had more information, but especially on that last round, even though Rogue was good at being able to get the refrags, they always seem to step behind. I will say, and this really builds, ooh, nice attempt to kill there from Necrox. He did do some damage, but he won't get the kill. Speaking of, easily hits the floor, and the grenade from Geo looks like he's used both. I didn't quite catch it, but yeah, there it is. He's used both, and that means that easily will be picked up and back in play. A hopeless situation for evil geniuses to take out the Valkyrie of easily as there were two bodies from Rogue mm -hmm. watching to see if a push from Geo onto the room that which the Valkyrie was felled oh. would actually pay dividends. Oh, Necrox finds Eclipse. So there's another body now inside of CCTV in security. It's going to be the Rook of Vertical. He's going to take some damage playing in the corner, but I don't know if he's aware of where EG is coming from. There's two no. bodies there, and Young holding a great angle. EG are hitting their shots in spades today. They have complete control. That will continue. The ball is firmly rolling down the hill at this point. So long shuttle. Half of Easley's life and Slash are there, and at that long range, the MPX of Easley is not going to do too much damage as the wall, just under 90, is torn apart. Also, losing that mirror window inside of security is going to be a major hindrance for Rogue as Easley tries to hold down all of Fountain Office all on his lonesome. He's going to start off with a kill. He'll take out Necrox, but it's still a 2v4 in favor of EG. Very clean kill there from Easley. Good prediction. Uh, but at the same time, 2v4. That's hard to recover from. You can see Canadians watching the rotation. He's got two C4 operators on defense. He's expecting one of them to drop down to try and deny the defuse plant. But with 30 seconds left, he's going to move upstairs to support his teammates who are stacking up on this east balcony. The push in from Young will be stopped by Easley, who's got all the kills for his team so far in this round. Sees the Thatcher, cannot land the shots though. MVK still alive. Geo though, coming in to support his teammate, will finish off the Valkyrie, leaving just Slash in the one versus three. The C4 misses, but not the headshot. Canadian goes down. Diffuser though, as well, on the floor. Slash hug. Looking to his left, but he's got an enemy to the right. Sees the foot and lays down some fire. That's the stand up and the shot from Geo. Evil geniuses take another round. If he had been able to secure that kill on Geo, that would have been massive for Slash as there was a crossfire on the door uh, from both Geo and the remaining body, which I believe was Necrox, if I recall correctly. So two members of EG watching the one doorway, knowing that they had to walk on through. I don't exactly know how many uh, energy drinks Canadian has drank? Quite a lot. But the man is on chat. Oh, man, he's on fire in chat. Yeah, he's possessed. He is a man possessed right now. Mm -hmm. he's, he's got something to say, and he's saying it. And, uh, well, Evil Geniuses have put themselves up three rounds and quite dominant dominantly at that. I mean, I really I really can't say Rogue has had much of a chance in these last couple rounds. I want to pick apart a few things that happened there. Uh, Evil Geniuses, one thing that I really want to take away is that Necrox walked into CCTV. Defenders, protect your he walked into CCTV <laughs> through the default doorway. He got a kill onto the Yeager, who was not paying attention to his location. And then, and then Necrox went into the main hallway, despite having not gotten control of the mirror window in CCTV. The real flaw here is not the stupid play that, in my opinion, that uh, Necrox made, just walking to the hallway, exposing himself to the mirror window. It's that Vertical didn't check the mirror window. Vertical at any moment could have been like, oh, hey, look, a jackal rocking down the main hall. Easy free kill. But he didn't, because he didn't expect that. That's a little bit silly. That's, that's a silly play that Necrox made, being just that silly, and because of that, not predicted, and not, co not compensated for, and Vertical missing out on a kill. So it's 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 all over bad, but Evil Geniuses came out on top, and that's the most notable thing. Then they took that, 
and they turned it into CCTV control. That entry that Necrox managed to get. From CCTV control, they had a, a really dominant man advantage, and that's because Rogue invested so heavily in CC. They didn't have many elements to support that hold either. Not information, you know, not Valkyrie cams, not a pulse underneath. You know, they, they didn't have that extra lethality of the C4 underneath that also would have come from the pulse. So there's a lot, I think, that Rogue left open on CCTV control. They didn't need to leave themselves that exposed. Excellent assessment of that, and we'll see exactly what Rogue is going to be able to do differently this time, because Rogue has not actually found any success on this map. The one round that they have a victory on is actually a bit of a misnomer here, as they got it due to the disconnect. Mm. And yeah. not uh, not appropriately timed rehost. so Rogue finding themselves the beneficiaries of that, and, and Evil Genius is leaving just a bit too early. But still, all EG and very firmly in the driver's seat as the site that was supposed to be played first round will appear yet again. CCTV, uh, or security rather, will once again go to EG. We've made a very brisk entrance into border and it feels like a lot of times Rogue is no counter punch. It just yeah. almost feels like they're waiting. But here's one, at least with Vertical taking out NVK, a great explosion <laughs> as you see Slash's corpse go flying. Say goodbye to the smoke and Rogue. Losing anchors early on has been a significant story so far and an unfortunate one for the rest of the team. I have to say, Geo has really been on top of his grenades so far in this match. And uh, yeah, I think uh, I'm with you here. The information game is really the, the problem here for Rogue. Vertical got that kill, and the reason he was able to do it is because he was just pushing into the expected entry from EG. He didn't have, in all likelihood, he didn't have anything calling out for him. He was just, hey, I need to hold this. A uh, little bit of mistake there from Vertical. Some HP sh uh, shaved away from easily, but he, he should be fine. Vertical won't, though, as uh, Canadian gets an easy headshot there on a tight angle. Shuttle able to refrag it, though, knowing the location of his opponent with the C4 well-placed. The C4 from Eclipse, though, not so well-placed. It will not find any damage. The problem is, is that Rogue is taking their lumps right now, and not really so much in stride, though they'll return fire as Geo vaults in and finds himself eating a little bit of damage as he has sole possession of office. EG's push right now on side of Armory Wall will be swiftly shut down by Eclipse, playing at half wall. He masterfully takes out Young and looks to handle another deftly, but won't be able to do it as Necrox is there instead. Visor on, spraying through the smoke. Cannot connect with Easily or Shuttle. In the dying moments around five. Geo's advance will be cut down by a prone Valkyrie. Necrox will know his position, waiting to try and find the Valkyrie. A lot of footprints as he downs the pulse. Can't finish off the Valkyrie as Rogue finds their counter punch, as we'd mentioned before of the play of this Valkyrie inside of Archives. And it's a good time for Rogue to be able to pick up that round as they'll finally be able to check off a box next to Armory. Yeah, so technically their second Armory win, but their only actual practical win. Uh, as the first time they won Armory, it was due to a forfeited round. So good job there to Rogue uh, securing that round. They really do need this last one, I think. Uh, the way this match has been going, the pace is definitely in EG's corner. They made a couple mistakes in that last round that resulted in Rogue being able to get the uh, fight back. One thing I will say, though, is actually, to me, that rogue was, uh, sorry, rather, that round was rogue digging themselves out of a hole because they're realizing the flaw in their defense, and that is what we have been touching on, the lack of information due to these operator bands on defense. Attackers need to locate what they're doing to compensate for this fact. So getting very aggressive. I don't know if you guys noticed in that last round, Rogue were peaking quite a lot. They wanted to take the fights, and because they did take those fights, they didn't allow yeah, Evil Geniuses time to set themselves up, use their drones to gain the information advantage. So props to Rogue for finding all those opportunities, especially blind, and capitalizing upon them. Evil Geniuses need to sure up their attack stride, maybe just be a little bit more patient with their information gathering on that drone front and not leave themselves exposed to those aggressive plays from Rogue if they want to secure this final round of the first half. So my theory Five that Rogue seconds, banned the Blackbeard so that they would maybe be able to throw in a surprise bathroom <laughs> tellers is not going Attackers to come to fruition, but also Attackers could be because they were anticipating maybe winning more than one round on defense <laughs> so far. EG's taken them though, so there's not. It's uh, not exactly been the best fortune for Rogue here on defense. Well, to build on what you said earlier, EG have really been hitting their shots. They have been, and EG it looks like they came to play today. And yeah. They, I mean, they absolutely slaughtered Accelerate yesterday in what was one of the more lopsided matches that we've seen in Pro League so far this season. Rogue have not had, I think, the start that they wanted and now speaking of start they wanted it's gonna be a double down as Canadian gets taken out and there's actually two from EG coming in very quick order and looking for a third but Necrox tussling with Eclipse as the castle 
Right, and the evil genius's skin is able to just evade death for the time being. Canadian, who'd been down in the process. This skirmish with Vertical will be picked back up, leaving Rogue in a 3v4 with EG holding the advantage. But a taser two here could actually take out Eclipse. The drone will be taken out. That was that was very interesting by Geo. It actually looks like Eclipse might only have 10 HP and could be felled by that drone, Michael. Yeah, I think that call was uh, made by Necrox, and Geo certainly heard it. So he's going to go for a second attempt. Eclipse, though, is going to die before that can even happen. Slash will get an odd position, but will win the fight regardless of how strange it is. So good job to him bringing this slightly back in his team's favor. But look at the time. Evil Genius is just... They, they can take this round in stride if they're patient and use their drones. And the thing is, is Slash now absorbing even more damage. Yeah, it, all this action, Michael, taking place in the first 90 seconds definitely favors the attackers here and a bit of a unwarranted peak from Slash as I think he tries to narrow that gap as best as he can or close that gap and just does not successfully. Gets cut down by Geo, leaving easily as Rogue's only hope. A minute. 10 seconds to go. The smoke will pass by the open hole and then it's tased by a Twitch drone that is just as harassing as it can be up top, actually on the CCTV server rack, rather. He's got one in bathroom waiting to see if Canadian is going to push. Easily might blink first, waiting, but he has a couple holes in the wall to watch. And there's Canadian, unable to land the first couple shots, but a course correction and a look to the right will give the Ash main EG's fourth round, and they'll walk away with it. Four to two before we switch sides. So this four two is a little bit deceptive because that was an absolutely dominant half for evil geniuses. Only technically, I suppose, dropping one round uh, to Rogue's play. Uh, it's the sort of half that you look at and you think to yourself, that probably would be a little bit more in EG's favor had other, uh, had other circumstances arisen. So really good play from EG there. A lot of it, I think, comes down to them being on attack. And this could continue moving into the second half, especially considering the morale factor of this game right now. The mindset of EG has got to be in a really good space, contrary to rogues. But, in my opinion, because evil geniuses were able to set the pace is why they were so dominant in that half. And rogue were trying their best to, ooh, to well, set their own pace. But, and that's why they won the one round that they did but they just were not capable of it in that first half. Because they now shift to attack, they're gonna be given a lot more leeway to do just that. So my big question is, how is Evil Geniuses going to play their defense? They are going to suffer from the same thing that Rogue suffered from, that's the lack of information. You can see even more so, because Evil Geniuses have only brought a mirror. that's their only info op, so that is, Going to, I think, lean heavily on EG, probably going to the aggressive play category, same as what we saw from Rogue, trying to get those picks. Now, this is a lineup from Rogue side of things that we see Rogue run an awful lot. Your Hibana, Capital, Zofia, IQ usually will be assisted maybe by an Ash, maybe by a Dokkabi. Depends on who you really want in there. Maybe you might even have a Thermite if they need it. Instead, they're going to be bringing a Ying, which will be Vertical's role, which will be interesting to watch him do that. You can, of course, Ying as an entry fragger, but as you mentioned, Rogue don't exactly subscribe to those strict of a role set as everybody mm -hmm. else. But I mean, still, you're likely going to imagine Vertical will take the point of attack. And given the fact that he's not running an ACOG, I'd imagine that he's likely going to be playing at very close ranges, trying to take maximum advantage of those Candelas. You can hear some telltale shots just ringing overhead of Vertical as he's prone by the door, walking into break room. He's going to be droned in as well by Slash, who checks one way and Vertical checks the other. So bringing Ying is kind of interesting. She's one of those operators that is hard countered by Jaeger, who's of course a staple on the defense, and if he's not banned, he's almost always being played. So you're going to need something to deal with the ADSs. Now we do have the IQ on easily, so that is available, and we'll be calling out most of those ADS locations. But at the same time, it's hard to always get the right Candelas off. And when you miss them, they can be detrimental to your push if you're relying upon them. So it's something that I think requires a lot of finesse for a team to properly utilize. Excellent placement of the battery there. You could see from Geo will result in only one battery being taken out as it's being shot from below. So he's going to be able to trick the other wall if he plays this correctly. But the Firebolt's going to do a lot of damage and Geo will fall back. 
And that wall also being taken, as you can see, the band yeah. battery had fallen off. As you mentioned, he can trick the one side, and even if he could have, they still managed to grab the wall in Rogue's hand on the other. Got some Spot flank drones set up, too, as Rogue is doing a great deal of work here on their entry, and they'll find their very first kill on a Canadian. The castle gone off of the board, and Rogue will open things up. They've been a little bit slower than EG, but mm -hmm. speed is not what is necessary. What is necessary, necessary is thoroughness, and that's what Rogue seems to be having at the moment. And they still have tons of utility available. Keep in mind that we have not seen a lot out of Zofia. We've not heard the Candelas from the Ying, nor have we seen more than just one asphyxiating bolt from Shuttle. It does not the bode well for EG over the next minute. Dropped. Yeah, Rogue definitely being very methodical here. As they start to peek their way into the site, there is no one on EG left exposed, but they have a hard hold Attackers on this breach. Clips using the information from his teammate's drone to try and get a pick from the drop, or rather, the holes in the floor, but he's not able to find his target as he has moved Flashbangs coming in, trying to disorient the defense, but there's no follow-up on the push, and look at this. Rogue's time management has not been ideal, and there's some team damage being done. The C4 preemptive, but too much so. Candela's going in, and they will force half wall, but oh no, the Ying unable to do any damage. Easily will get the refrag, though, onto NVK. Shuttle gets a spray to Necrox, and almost a second there, putting Young on low HP. He will be finished off by his teammate, and it's just a complete mess that Rogue comes out on top of, thanks to that man advantage. Shootout at the OK Corral going on. It's yeah. Everybody trying to find their targets amidst the smoke, which cleaved off the middle of that site and deprived both the attackers and defenders of a good line of sight, which is what prompted the uh, the ruckus and the tussle that came through that uh, those uh, those smoke grenades. So that'll be Rogue picking up a big round for them to try and keep this gap close and not let the game slip away. It also means that while well, they can attack the same site again, as EG is going to go back to Armory and Archives as the defense do not hold on to that round. A lot of that round played out exactly as I expected. I mean, evil. the one thing that I think Evil Geniuses did wrong there is that maybe they were a little bit too passive because you pointed it out in the middle of the round. Rogue were being very slow, extremely slow pace there in their take. And they left themselves exposed at some pretty key moments that could have been possibly capitalized upon by Evil Geniuses. But as I'm sure everyone else noticed, EG were being very passive. They were not pushing their luck there on that defense. And I think it might be a um, kind of a, a winner's mindset. It, well, a, I'm winning mindset at least in that they have, they're up so many rounds, they just want to lock this match out. They want to make sure they get it. So they're playing smart. They're playing slow, playing cautious. And it ended up costing them because Rogue happened to have the right tools to counter that specific uh, play style. And again, we're coming all the way back here to the information game. EG did not have a Valkyrie in that round. They only had the Mira. They have made that rotation, though. As you can see, Canadian is going to be bringing the Valkyrie. Excellent choice, EG, if I may say so. Uh, probably going to help them quite a lot in how they play this round, e whether they play it passively or aggressively. E either way, really. But again, I would like to see EG maybe try and... Uh, get some early advantage here. That's what allowed Rogue to get the one round they got on defense. And I think it could help EG as well. Again, it really does bounce back to the lack of the evil eyes and yokais. I think information is the big thing that you said, right? I mean, the last time we saw EG and Dark Zero play on this matchup, when Dark Zero was still known as SK, what, what really came in handy was the amount of information that was at SK or Dark Zero at the time now's uh, disposal. And I think mm -hmm. with border on a map at the way it is, especially with Armory, there's a penchant for a lot of teams not to run that many roamers and just kind of keep everybody firmly in sight. The big problem with that is that if you can't maintain one portion of that slightly off-site play, then you lose almost complete map control. And that's what I'd said earlier was that the issue with EG was that they had to go up against so much utility from Rogue, all those candelas, the smokes, the asphyxiating bolts, and that's exactly what happened when Rogue pushed in. And a big part of it is not knowing what map control you've lost and what map control is simply vacant. You know, uh, if you don't have a camera or a yokai or an evil eye or a mirror window or any of the, a pulse, anything to gather information on a room and there's nobody playing it and on the defense side, and because you, you touched on, there's not a whole lot of roamers these days on some of these sites, uh, on border specifically then it can sometimes feel like you're trapped in a corner as a defensive team. There's no room to flex, no room to make flanks, no room to make plays. And that can really hamper your defense, no matter who you are. Interesting to see exactly how they're going to try and approach this mirror window here on Rogue's side. I think they'll smoke off the mirror window and now come into a push, but 
EG have completely fallen yeah. off. So Fountain, they will find, is completely clear. Rogue have sole possession of that. And now this is EG losing your map yeah, control, as you mentioned. And it's very tough to know when you have. Yeah, Vertical just sees Geo splashing around on the floor. And he'll, uh, well, he'll hope that the rest of EG is able to take a bath. Is that the very first kill for Vertical and Rogue? It's an EMP that'll get caught as well by one of the ADSs. And still, Rogue with drone economy up. 45 seconds left, and Shuttle is able to drone in for Vertical. Yeah, Rogue have been very slow on their attacks, but they have been excellent at their utility use. They have completely isolated this archive site. The asphyxiating bolt will go down, but Shuttle will breathe in some of the toxic canister. The C4 will find its target. Two explosions from EG as one C4 works. The other doesn't. The Canadian will be tagged in. Pull out that MPX, and he'll spray down Shuttle. To leave Rogue to, Rogue to have to re-maneuver. They are fully committed to an Archives push here, and they will need to grab that Diffuser, which is in harm's way. There will be a down this time on the Necrox, though, and oh, Eclipse walks up and picks up a two-piece on the Canadian and Necrox. The man is just in right now. NVK on a good flank, just is looking for one, but Diffuser will go down, and Young is there to also snap onto the head of Eclipse, just leaving easily, and while he'll get one from the grave, thank goodness for Young, if you're an EG fan, that's an easy disable of the Diffuser, and EG will go up. They score 5-3. to three. And there you Defender go. Evil geniuses on what would have been in the past match point, but what is now just one round out. Looking pretty dominant so far. And Rogue were poised to win that round. I think we can both agree. They played it pretty well leading up to the actual site take, but once they got into that site take, it all started falling apart. I think a big part of that has to do with how uh, they were not able to open up extra lanes to attack the site. Also, Rogue was kind of all over the place. Um, I think one of the big flaws there, or not flaws, but uh, more problems for Rogue, is how spread out that attack was um, and how much opportunity it afforded evil geniuses to make plays. Remember how I talked about if you don't have the information as a defensive team, whether you know, no matter what it's coming from on what is vacant and what is being controlled by the enemy, it's sometimes hard to make plays. Well, evil geniuses just went for it in that round and they seized a lot of opportunities. And the problem is that Rogue left them those opportunities in abundance. There was so much open uh, open room. There was so much space for evil geniuses to take. It was poor control from Rogue, and I feel like maybe they could have done uh, well to just stack up and take all from the same location if they're having trouble locking things down. Uh, it definitely did cost them a lot that they had, for example, Canadian playing in that main hallway as the Valkyrie. He was able to completely throw off Rogue. And yes, okay, we did see, uh, I want to say it was Eclipse, as the buck coming up the main stairs, able to get that two-piece, but uh, he was out of position. He was unable to assist his team following those two kills, and Evil Geniuses had, before that, already established a man advantage, so it really didn't matter. So yeah, I think Rogue, maybe just a little bit more control there would have been nice, maybe taking control of CCTV, opening up that wall and controlling the main hallway, cutting off the rotation as they attacked into B, but it's all in the past now, and Evil Geniuses is looking very dominant here. Still running this utility lineup of Rogue that has now slightly shifted in towards more of an attacker-favored, uh, fragger-favored style of lineup now. So they don't have the same Capital Zofia mess that they had before. That worked, I would say, quite well. They didn't really have much of a way to stop those C4s. That really ended up being the downfall of Rogue last time around. So, But EG, after they saw how well that Valkyrie worked for them, they're going to forego her. And I would imagine that they probably would gamble on the fact that because they, uh, number one, Rogue has an IQ, but also number two, that the downstairs bomb site, you can keep control above and basically be your own Valkyrie cameras in, in hopes. That would be my guess behind EG's thought process here. Canadian going to be tricking here on the uh, mirror window, and that makes a whole lot of sense. Oh, what a shot from NVK to follow that up. Canadian and NVK doing some great duo work to hold on to Archives and Fountain here. And the nade from Rogue, that shuttle will miss. Truly unfortunate for the attacking team right now. And the push-in will be spotted, but Vertical wins that fight. An incredible play. NVK able to get the refrag, but he is also refragged by Rogue. And that is, I think, a win for Rogue overall. Good take on the top. Absolutely, and they've got the possession that they needed. That dual SAS counterparts of Shuttle and Eclipse just able to barge on in dispatch the final member of EG playing above, over top of the site. You can see the rotate from EG will come in to try and consolidate the site downstairs. There's still a minute left to play, so obviously, 
benefit the defense just for the time being. Geo taking some damage. He's got the castle barricades up as well that will hopefully still slowly or slow rogues push if you happen to be fans of EG. Now, you just noticed that rogues saw a body of EG rotating over by security, which means that if rogue can make the right adjustment here, they can catch a member of EG who appeared to be Geo up top in security and end up getting a free kill. Looks like he's fallen back to customs through the drop down, and that's probably been called as you can see. Slash is playing the angle, he sees the barrel, but unable to find the shot. Now the problem here is that he's still in customs, and oh no! His position given away, he knows he's exposed, he'll eat some damage. Geo, though, will play for time. With only 17 seconds left, Necrox is going to take down Eclipse, and Geo onto Slash. It's all up to Shuttle now, pushing into the site, but he is felled by the smoke of Necrox, and Evil Geniuses take another round, match point. And on match point, they're going to need to go to either the Teller's bathroom, so they're going to need to go to Customs upstairs. I would imagine that we're likely going to see Customs. That seems like a no-brainer. And also, Mira is unbanned, which will greatly assist them. Mm -hmm. This Mira Castle combo has seen a great deal of popularity in this matchup, in particular being ran almost every single round. And well, would you look at that? It's going to be a Customs Inspections and Supply Room Defense. But... Doesn't even look like a mirror or a castle will come out, so completely <laughs> proving me wrong, unless there's a six pick here. With EG taking the dock, hmm. are we about to see Canadian spawn peak? I think it's likely. Uh, I think uh, Canadian gets this way sometimes, and seeing him play like this, I mean, it works for him. When he's really riled up, he's into a match. He seems to be very into this one. Uh, if he gets a spawn peak, I think we can safely say Attack that evil geniuses will take the round if he's successful now we don't that's not a given it really isn't it's a huge gamble to make uh if you're new to cg sports maybe you just play this game casually you might imagine all oh, that spawn peaking it happens a lot well no not so much uh at this level of play as again you leave yourself very exposed when you commit to that play it's it's possible though canadian could also just play safe with the dock <laughs> it's definitely within the realm of possibility uh, EG, though, overall, I think we can all agree, in a good position right now, say in their stride. Interesting holes being opened up, actually, uh, upstairs. Of course, if you're unfamiliar with customs, you need to hold CCTV to hold this site. Not for the whole round, necessarily. If you come down to the last minute, I guess you could fall back. But it's definitely a risk. If you lose control of CCTV, as the defenders, you lose control of A, it's too, easy, it's too easy for the attackers to isolate the site and vault in through the window and plant and use control of Passport. It was indeed a run out that we saw from Canadian, so I think that answers <laughs> the question right there, that he was possibly considering a spawn peak of some kind. Maybe he did some damage to Slasha. It does definitely look that way. Yeah, so I mean, he wasn't... It, he, he was, I guess, in a way successful, but not. Uh, he didn't get a kill. So the round's far from over, and uh, as such, the match. Excellent work from Vertical here with how close the wall is to where you spawn. He's able to find pretty much the lion's share of electronics from EG, and he finds the Valkyrie camera, and as well as a bulletproof camera that was brought along by the dock of Canadian. So these are, this is, once again, going to be information that will be available. Here's the thing with customs, though. You can take it very quickly if you're good, and if the defense neglects the correct areas. This actually happened to Evil Geniuses all the way back in Sao Paulo against Ents, if you recall, on match point. Mm -hmm. Ents just walked right into the double doors at the back of customs, and ended up getting the plant down. Geo dives out, takes out Shuttle, and eliminate the Capital. That is monstrous, but finds himself dying to the Claymore that was established earlier. So unlucky on his behalf to find an early grave, but he does walk away with one. So he's bringing him down with him. And you were talking about the utility that he just got rid of, that uh, a Capital. It's definitely a win for Geo, and as Canadian takes down easily, this is looking like an EG round. And this has been a pretty swift match so far. A lot of this action happening early in the rounds. It feels like we've only been playing for two rounds or so. Canadian gets his second, though. And there you go, Rogue on their last legs. This vertical watching through this window here, knowing that it's only him and Slash. With Slash holding on to that diffuser, NVK could possibly go for a run out up top and catch either Slash or Vertical looking the wrong way. That Slash on Repel, who now dropped back down with Vertical, trying his best to take the time that he knows he has available to him. He's still got a minute to go. Mm -hmm. Match point. Rogue having a disappointing matchup yesterday, looking to try and turn the tide today, but it has been tough for them as they seem to be overwhelmed by EG a lot of steps of the way. Vertical will get caught in a crossfire as his position gets called out. And old Slash Hug 
just outside of custom is going to crouch walk his way down and well canadian not too far off could possibly see him as they now are within the same realm and there you go around the corner it's uh canadian taking out slash and eg walk away with that seven to three what a fury an incredible performance by them canadian very happy about that win as you can see um and I will say that in that last round, Canadian was certainly the MVP. A big part of that round and the reason it went EG's favor is that Rogue were incapable of taking control of Server Workshop, which clearly was their game plan. Once they established that horizontal presence, they could then execute onto the rest of Customs, or at least that's what it seemed like they wanted to do. Um, which is curious, because as I talked about earlier, CCTV is oh so very important, whether you're the attackers or the defenders, on customs as a site. So curious that Rogue chose to not even attempt to take control of it and instead went for that horizontal play. Again, didn't work out for them. Canadian just winning his gun.